Okay, everybody, I am at the Carlisle House Historic Park, and we're going to pan around here. And today, the uh, park is hosting uh, a symposium for the American Small Swords. And uh, this is John Glenn, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about um, well, his role in this symposium. Hi. Yeah, my name's uh, John Glenn. Uh, I go by Jay. Uh, if you're looking for me on Facebook, it's John Jay. Uh, I am an instructor in small sword, uh, early 17th century rapier, uh, Italian dueling saber, and dueling sword at the Mid-Atlantic Society for Historic Swordsmanship, or MASHES, and we meet on Sundays in Annapolis. I also teach the Olympic sport fencing to kids up in Baltimore at Chesapeake Fencing Club. That's and great. I was one of the instructors yesterday, um, been participating in, in this event in various roles uh, since it started. And uh, yesterday I was teaching how to parry repost from uh, particular, we're studying one master this year, uh, Domenico Angela. And uh, so we worked on his theories on what the best way to stop from being hit and then hit your opponent back. <laughs> so, John, your uh, outfit there, what uh, time frame does it reflect? Or? Uh, 18th century, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge uh, by necessity for uh, fencing. Um, I'm trying to get the impression of a, when this is buttoned, it's similar to the short jackets that were worn for fencing. Uh, so not not any particular really narrow date, but just a good overall impression. Um, I need better shoes. <laughs> 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 and uh, there's a few little anachronisms, like this is the uh, a pin from the original Small Search Symposium, which is in Edinburgh, Scotland. And they were sort of the inspiration for our event. One of the founder of this event, who unfortunately has passed on, Victor Markland, that, gone over and taught at that event in Scotland and brought back the idea of starting a similar event here in America and we've had instructors from England and Wales and Scotland and uh, from other parts of Europe and from Canada and Spain and it's it's been a really great event and we've been really happy to revive it post-COVID in, in Victor's honor. That's great uh, as you probably know uh, it dovetails great with Scotland because John Carlisle was a Scotsman and some of the founding fathers were Scottish so Alexandria loves its Scottish folks. <laughs> hey let's talk a little bit about the um, I guess you would say the swords. Um, what are we looking at here? Uh, these are all uh, antiques. Um, we've got everything from Part of Angelo's manual is how to face people from other countries. Uh, the Spanish were still using uh, rapiers, so this is uh, the longer weapon that had kind of gone out of fashion in the rest of Europe, but uh, the Spanish were still hanging on to it. Um, there's some German and Italian pieces here. We have foils that were the practice weapons that have a square cross section and had a little button on the end. Um, underneath the button was sort of a nail head, which is where the term foiled comes from because they had foiled the point of the weapon. And it would normally be a little wrap of leather with uh, wax thread over it, period. Um, and then the actual small swords See something similar to this. They could have different kinds of guard. This was an officer's sword. Um, try to see if there's a more typical example here. This one. What really defines the small sword is this triangular cross section. Okay. And they could be sharpened on sometimes just on the end on the edges. It's primarily a thrusting weapon. Okay. There were still some weapons that had an edge all the way down, some grooves, um, that could also be used to cut. 
Okay. So, John, um, this goes on to today till what, about 4 or something? Till 5 o'clock. 5. We'll, we'll so, be having a tournament this afternoon from 2 to 5. Okay, so folks coming out and it's free. Yes. Well, John, thank you so much. Uh, this is really uh, something that I think folks will enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.